Good morning. We are so glad to have you here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church for our online worship service. My name is Tom Simmons and I serve as the lay leader here. I will be leading worship today. If our video feed is working, please go ahead and hit that like button or leave a comment in the feed. As we allow for more people to log in, please enjoy this prelude. Once again, good morning. If you've just joined us, we want to welcome you to our live worship service here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church. My name is Tom Simmons, and I serve as the lay leader here. I will be leading worship today. There's a little inside joke about when I preach. When people in the church see me on Sundays and I'm wearing a tie, they know two things. Number one, that I'm leading worship. Number two, that we're going to beat the Baptists to lunch. Well, since we are still worshiping virtually, I want to change that up just a little. Instead of beating the Baptists to lunch today, if you order now, we will be done before Grubhub makes it to your house. Our opening hymn will be, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and we invite you to sing along with us. The words will be in the comments section, or if you are on our email list, in the bulletin that we sent out. come to our time of celebrations and concerns please leave your prayer concerns in the comments section as our choir director Amy Davis plays our special music
Thank you very much, Amy. Um, as I said, this is our celebrations and concerns time. Um, many of you have already received a notification from the prayer chain. I understand that a couple few hours ago, uh, Willie Johnson was taken to the hospital. I do not have any other details other than that. I would like to ask for prayers for Ms. Willie and her daughter, Stephanie Rast. Um, this, uh, on Friday, I got a phone call from my wife that she was having a really bad reaction to some of her medications that she was on. And she spent the rest of Friday in the emergency room. She is much better now, and I appreciate just keeping Janae in your thoughts and prayers. Um, also a good friend of mine over in Greensboro, his name is Wayne Southern. Um, I put this in one of the comment feeds a couple of weeks ago that he has been diagnosed with cancer. He is going through chemo treatments and he seems to be doing, responding well to that. So please keep Wayne Southern and his family in your prayers as well. Also, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Um, I want to ask for a special prayer for our military and their families. Um, it is a holiday not designated for veterans, but for those of us, those freedom fighters that did not make it home. Please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And now we come to a time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that we can come and worship you. For all of our celebrations, we give you thanks. And for all of our concerns, we ask that your will be done. Lord, we ask a special blessing on Emily and John and little Stevie Grace, that they are all safe and sound and doing well. We thank you for the privilege of coming to, from this church and broadcasting here to our many members still at home. We pray for all of those first responders and essential workers today, Lord, dealing with this pandemic, <clears throat> that your hand of protection be on them as they perform the duties that they do. May your healing hand be on those affected by this virus. We pray for our leaders, that they will be guided by you and make the decisions necessary to guide us through this storm. All these things we ask in your son's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I want to say first, just how nice it is to come to you today, right side up. There has definitely been a learning curve in our new online virtual worship, and we appreciate all the kind words and the support for this new ministry. Last we spoke, I read a verse from Revelation. I wanted to tell you that this was our theme verse for when I was district youth leader of the formerly known Durham District. We were rebuilding our youth program and we needed a fresh start then and I believe that we needed to revisit those words to look for a reassurance as we begin to revive, refresh, and restart again as our church. Phase two of coming back to some sense of normalcy is beginning, and the planning is underway for all of us to mix and mingle again with the world. We will be planning, planning, and planning some more on how to make that work in the coming weeks, and be assured that the worship committee will be working hard to make that as smooth as possible. Change is never easy but it is very necessary as we slowly move into what we consider some sort of being familiar. I want to expand a little bit on that four letter word I introduced in my last message. I am referring to the word fear. Did you realize that the word fear appears in the Bible 515 times? It may be slightly reassuring that the words fear not appear 170 times. I want to use that to lead into our scripture reading for the day. I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 13. 
hear these words of Isaiah. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, who am I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called you from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Yes, all who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. These who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear, I will help you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. We live in a world today that thrives on scaring us to death. For people who fear, the world is a very scary place. Every last one of us has something that we're afraid of. I could stand here today and tell you one of mine, snakes. I assure you that as much as I love this church and these people that are in here helping me broadcast today, that if there was a snake in here with us, you'd be on your own. I may call Eddie and tell him about it later, but you wouldn't catch me back in this building until it was gone. The Lord says, fear not. I would tell you, and I would agree, that that is far easier said than done. It is not easy to overcome your fears and anxiety. One certainly leads to another. When I was five years old, I was in a summer camp where they took us to Old Duke Park to teach us how to swim. One by one, our instructor was putting our faces in the water to get us used to it. I watched as each kid in my group, where I was one of the shortest and the youngest, got dumped. Everybody was doing pretty good. Well, my turn came. The instructor put his hand on my head, I lost my balance, and went under. Just for that split second, I was underwater could not breathe, could not think, and thought, sure, that was the end of my little life. Finally, I was jerked back up by the arm. Needless to say, that was the end of swimming lessons for the day, and that one event led me to a healthy fear of the water. I might go into a pool, but I would let no one get anywhere near me, and no way was I putting my head under. I wouldn't even let my own mother help me get used to it. It lasted for about 10 years or so before I was willing to try again. Slowly but surely, and with the help of my faithful diving mask, and then later a nose clip, I was able to get my head back underwater. Instead of having a fear of water, over the years I have gained a healthy respect for it. I'm still not excited about standing in the ocean when the tide rolls in, but that's another embarrassing story for another day. While I was in college, I learned a healthy respect for fire. Now, before you start laughing, let me explain my nickname in college chemistry class, Fireball. We were doing an experiment on butane, and let's say I got myself in trouble that morning. I did not fear the fire, but I respected it. I can almost hear some of my old youth group, Betty and my wife, wanting me to talk about a particular ski trip and well, Sarah, I know you're watching. I know you remember this story. Let's just say I helped the entire group appreciate and respect fire. When I worked in the grocery business, the last position I had was a salad bar manager. I was paid to maintain a salad bar, keep it fresh and running for my customers on a daily basis. I was taught many lessons on sanitation, but I would like more to focus on my affection for knives. Some of my former co-workers can tell you the many times I would show off, twirl my knife around in my fingers, and I still enjoy doing that today. But after many cuts and many band-aids, I gained a very healthy respect for the blade. 
I told everyone I ever trained that if you are scared of the knife and cutting yourself, then you have no business being in the food prep industry. I promise you that a knife, a fire, water, or even this virus have no concern for you. They exist and they are ever present. Having a respect for these do not make you scared. It makes you aware. Remember the words of Isaiah. Do not fear. I will help you. These words are assurance that even as bad as we think things are, that God is with us. It does not mean that we can just go around like nothing is going to hurt us because that's just not true. If you play with fire, you will be burned. If you misuse a knife, you will be cut. And if you goof off in the water too much, you can drown. These are all very true. But if you step out in faith with a healthy respect for what is around you, you have nothing to fear. So by all means, wash your hands. Sanitize until your heart's content. And wear your masks if that's what you feel like you need to do. If you're keeping track of our Summer Psalm series, you will know that yesterday we read one of the most profound and most well-known psalms ever written. I am referring to Psalm 23. These words come to us again today. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What assurance from these words of David. If God is with us, who can stand against us? He holds us up by his right hand. The imagery of this psalm comes to us in our time of need. God is our protector. David did not fear because he knew God was with him. We are told that we should not fear, that we are assured the kingdom of heaven. No matter what obstacle we face, God will see us through it or overcome it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being with us and holding us up with your mighty right hand. Help us not to live in fear. Help us to put our trust in your unfailing love. Amen. Please join us in our hymn of dedication.
all sound so good singing. I just, uh, before we go into our time of announcements, I want, I'd like to do something that we haven't done since we started this virtual worship. Normally on a Sunday service, after the hymn of dedication, we would say a creed or the affirmation of faith. Today I will be using the Apostles' Creed. Will you join me at home? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I do not have any announcements that I know of other than next week I am being told that Pastor John will be rejoining us. I hope he gets a haircut. And with our summer, and to keep track of our summer psalm series, I would like to uh, go ahead and give this benediction. And I'm going to end it with a quote that I got this week, and I really like it, and I think you will too. Fear does not stop death. It stops life. And worrying does not take the place of tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. Truer words have never been spoken in today's world. Go in peace. <laughs>